Finish shit. Twitch won't exist in seven years. The self-sabotage of a live stream empire. Um, let's see if this video has any merit whatsoever. Uh, because I highly doubt it. Been on a steady decline for the past two years, and they have no idea how to fix it. They are potentially losing hundreds of millions of dollars per year, laying off hundreds of employees, banning some of their most important creators, implementing useless features. Okay, so like, I don't know, like, Kai's not banned, right? Aiden Ross is banned, and that's like, good. Ginny and yeah, I get that, and Doc's a legal matter. Creators ...implementing useless features and are constantly proving how little they know or care about the live streaming community. Twitch has been the biggest live streaming platform for the better part of a decade, but there is some competition on the horizon. Although there it is. wouldn't take much for YouTube to put Twitch out of their misery, True. it's very likely that their collapse will come from their own self-sabotage. First and foremost, Twitch's financial stability is confusing. And although they reported $2.8 billion in revenue in 2022, it's unclear how much of that, if any, was profit. However, there are a lot of implications that suggest the company is struggling to be in the green. Twitch's four ways of making money are through subscribers, who pay $5 a month to get an ad-free experience, as well as other small benefits. Right. In-app purchases, which include bits, a digital currency that users can purchase to donate to streamers. Partnerships with brands and sponsors, and of course, the number one, advertising. We don't know how many total paid subscribers there are on Twitch. I did find this metric from Stream Hatchet that says in April of 2021, Twitch had 8.7 million subscribers, where 43% of them were Amazon Prime subs. A Prime subscriber is someone who gets an ad-free experience for $0 since they already have an Amazon Prime membership, because Amazon owns Twitch. Right. Therefore, Twitch doesn't make any money on that sub. In fact, you could argue they're losing money since viewers are paying $0 and not getting ads, and and Twitch has to pay creators $1 and some change for that. Listen, chat, I say this every time. If you are a avid Twitch viewer, right? If you're an avid Twitch viewer, your smartest thing you can do. Let's see if I can find it on a website. Let's see if I can find it. What if I have to type Twitch Turbo? Is Twitch Turbo. Okay. Cat's out of the bag. Twitch Turbo is the best thing that you can have if you're an avid Twitch viewer. What is Twitch Turbo, someone said. You get ad-free viewing on every single stream you watch, okay? Every single stream, period. You don't have to worry about ads anymore. Ad blocks usually don't work, right? It is 100%. The, if you watch, I'd say, more than like three or four Twitch streams, Twitch Turbo is the way to go. It is. Uh, how much is it, chat? Someone said $9 a month. Okay, it's $9 when you spend $5 on a, a tier 1 sub. You see what I mean? It's $9 when you spend $5 on a tier 1 sub. And you get never, av you never have to worry about ads... For mobile, it is fantastic. It is the way to go. Twitch probably hates me for promoting this, but it is just the truth. It is so good. And the streamer still gets the ad revenue. So it's it's really, for, for viewers, it is the way to go. I mean, you can see a lot of the people who are spamming White Hardo. They have it because it is totally worth it. Prime sub. Anyways, this graph indicates that in the month of April, Twitch had 4.7 million paid subscribers times right. five dollars, which is 23 and a half million times 12 months average, which would be about 282 million dollars in sub revenue in 2021. But Twitch yep. on average receives between 30 and 50 percent of that money because for affiliate streamers, Twitch takes 50 percent or two dollars and fifty cents of the. Okay, so I've talked to Twitch a lot. I've talked to the CEO of Twitch a lot. I've talked to Twitch staff a lot over the years. Uh, anyone that thinks that Twitch makes a lot of its money through their subs doesn't know or understand how Twitch makes their money. It's just the truth. $5 subscriber price. And for partners, they take 30%. 
or $1.50 of the $5. So if we favor the high end of 50%, that would equal $141 million in subscriber revenue that goes to Twitch. But if okay. Stream Hatchet's estimation of Twitch only having 4.7 million paid subscribers per month is wrong, and they actually have around 10 to 20 million paid subscribers per month, that would bring Twitch's cut between $300 and $600 million per year. Some people argue that Twitch taking a 50% cut of sub revenue is just an act of greed, because most of their money comes from advertising. I think Twitch taking a 50% cut is so stupid. And I've said that to the CEO's face. I think it's stupid. Not necessarily because of any type of financial gain, but because of the marketing that other companies can do and use on the fact that it's 50%. Because if they just raised it to 70%, nobody can say, oh, our website's 95%, 100%, or anyway. It doesn't matter. You, But 50% just sounds greedy. It's, it sounds greedy. And I've told Twitch, th Twitch this, right? I told the CEO this to his face. I think that what Twitch should do is they should cut our ad money that we get a little bit, right? Cut it by a little bit because we do get a lot of money in our ads. That's how Twitch streamers make a lot of their money is ads at the top. But the bottom streamers don't. We should take a little bit of our ad cut, right? Take a little bit more and then do 70% for everybody, for at least, I don't think everybody, right? If you're a, a, a one to five to 10 viewer streamer, it doesn't make a difference. I think that you should have 70% if you are somebody that is probably getting to that point of becoming full time. Like I think a great thing that Twitch used to have, and I don't know why they, they, I, they stopped doing it, was you needed 500 average subs or something like that to get to 70, 30 split. That was fine. And I think that's perfectly okay to do um, and they should probably go back to implementing that, in my opinion. Now, 141 to 600 million dollars is nothing to scoff at, but compared to 2.8 billion, I could see why people make the claims. However, it seems like Twitch needs this money to keep their business from failing. According to a blog post in November 2022, where Twitch president Dan Clancy... Okay, there's also a lot of hate for Dan Clancy, okay? There's a lot of hate. Dan Clancy is a smart motherfucker. An absolute smart motherfucker. And he gets this space so well. He does. He gets this space so well. I've talked to him multiple times. The dude fucking gets it. He gets it. He's not dumb. He is a very smart guy and he actually completely understands the space. <laughs> Who is it's the truth, the he does. Announced that creators who make over $100,000 in... I'll be real with you. I went into, like, talking to him for the first time, and I thought that he wouldn't get it. But he does. He actually does. Sub revenue will no longer get their 70-30 split. It will go down to 50-50, and over time, all creators will split the sub revenue 50-50 with Twitch. Why? Well, because it's too expensive to run Twitch. Delivering high definition, low latency always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive. Right. Using the published rates from Amazon's Web Services Interactive Video Service, or IVS, which is essentially Twitch video, live video costs for a 100 CCU streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than $1,000 per month. Now what so what they said here is very misleading. If you want to start your own live stream platform, you can pay for Amazon IVS or basically Twitch's infrastructure. The problem with Dan's statement here is there is simply no way Amazon is charging Twitch the same rate that anyone else would be charged for using IVS. Right. Why wouldn't Amazon do that? Well, again, because Amazon owns Twitch. Amazon would charge me or you $1,000 per month to deliver HD live video to 100 concurrent viewers at 200 hours a month, but they likely charge Twitch yeah, Zach Rar, they fucking hate Zach Rar. Absolutely. Asmin does not run ads. Asmin sits there and streams all day, and he doesn't even have subs. So yeah, they fucking hate Asmin, uh, I'm sure. It's at least 50 to 90% less than that. In fact, no... You want to know how, chat? We, we almost boycott Twitch if we wanted to, like, get better pay or whatever. We would all stop running ads, and we would honestly destroy Twitch. Nobody has any real idea of how much it costs to run Twitch. Obviously, you have employee compensation with thousands of employees, but more importantly, billions of dollars per year in energy costs to maintain those servers and deliver perfect quality on-demand streaming all over the world right. at any given moment. And although we don't know those costs, we could pretty safely say that taking a higher percentage from their partners is not going to... Unionize? Look... I'm not trying to be a Twitch shill. I'm just not. 
But I don't see Twitch as this massive problem that a lot of people try to portray it as. And I think it's marketing for a lot of other sites. But I don't think Twitch is this massive shithole problem. And they do a lot wrong like people want to portray that they do. I just don't. Um, I think Twitch has gotten a lot better over the years. I do. I do. I don't think Twitch is that bad. Cover the expenses. What What do you guys think Twitch is so bad for that you're like, oh, you're sucking their dick? I Honestly, what what is so bad about it? The ads. They're trying to work on that. Totally agree with you. The ads they're trying to fix. They understand that problem. I've talked to Dan personally. They understand that. Totally get that. Cam girls. Dude... Who cares? I, I mean, really, who gives a fuck? Who, I, I cannot care. If, that, if that's your big problem here, then you have really no problems. Like, okay, yeah, there's women in bikinis. All right, who gives a shit? Uh, don't talk bad about anybody that goes on my stream. Uh, they ban everyone that's not a libtard. I'm right here, man. I'm right here. Clarity of bans slash consistency of bans. Look, I agree. I think they're bad. I think that Twitch could do better, though. But I'm not saying that they're not. Too, they're, 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 they are. Dan Clancy just came in a few months ago. He, he knows a lot of the problems, and he's trying to solve them. I'm just going to say that. He nope. knows that the ads are annoying as fuck for all of you. He gets that. They're trying to find ways to fix that. Regarding how much Twitch makes from bits, it's unclear, but I'm sure most streamers can agree that bits donations are nowhere. Someone said discoverability is awful. I, look, this is the truth with having hundreds of thousands of people stream on your site. Some people are just not going to be found and that's just it. And it's just how it's going to be. I think Twitch has done a great job. And, and, and why does Twitch push the bigger streamers? It's because they're probably the better streamers. Okay? It's just the truth. Um, they push those streamers. And I think Twitch has done a great job for a lot of the smaller streamers to get more notoriety with the recommended channel, with the channels that you've seen in the last 30 days. They've even changed it from high to low to recommended. I think Twitch has done a great job bringing out new creators as much as you want to say they haven't. Another great thing that they do is Guest Star. Guest Star has been doing great. It's been making a lot of streamers uh, get other content creators around. Um, it's just the truth, it, you know? Uh, like when I was a small streamer and I didn't make it in 2018, I didn't say this is because Twitch is uh, too top-heavy. That's just how the world works, and especially in, in the entertainment business. And you can't complain about it and bitch because that's how it fucking works. Near as common as subscribers. It was reported that Twitch generated $185 million from in-app purchases. I'm not sure if this includes subscribers and bits together or if it's just bits and other microtransactions like badges, gift cards, and the loot cave. Either way, we are learning that at best, Twitch is generating roughly $750 million from subs and in-app purchases, or at worst, $185 million. Regardless of what the real numbers are, we know that without a doubt, Twitch could never survive on just paid subscribers and in-app purchases, which means that likely the two plus billion dollars in revenue they generated in 2022 to, pretty much it comes from advertising and brand partnerships. The problem with this is advertisements are destroying the viewer experience. True. Creators have a terrible revenue split with Twitch, which has led to a near 10% decrease in average viewership and why- That is just totally not accurate. Okay, why is, ad why is average viewership going down for most creators? It's not because of the fucking ads. It's mainly the reason why is because it's COVID is over. We are in a lull of content. There's not a lot going on. Um, and that's really it. It, it it's absolutely has nothing to do with the fact that there's three minutes of ads being run for most streamers. I'm, that's just not true. Uh, that it, it's just not true. Watch time for the past two years. We all know how annoying ads can be. Besides when yeah, I Yeah, they're do annoying. That, because today's video is sponsored by Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information about you? It no, never. It's pretty weird. I'd rather have that stuff not available to just anyone who's I just go to Destiny for Stream Data for that. brokers are making so much money selling your information to robocallers and spammers. Luckily, Aura can find the data brokers that are sharing your information. And these brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them, but they make it very difficult to do so. Oh, That's cool. where Aura comes in and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. Look, I the biggest problem with Twitch is only one thing to me. It's the way you guys get ads. Because holy fucking shit, is the experience so annoying when you get a three-minute ad uh, smack. Um, 
I personally don't think it's that annoying when the streamer is in the bathroom, right? Um, like, for example, I have Camping Troll and Legito. They get paid to run my ads um, when I'm uh, going to the bathroom or I'm, uh, there's a lull of content. But the problem is the average streamer doesn't have that and they run ads once an hour. And it could be randomly throughout the stream. And then you're in the middle of watching somebody and you get hit with three minutes of fucking ads. And it is, it's annoying as fuck. It's intrusive. It's too much. If they were able to make the ads more enjoyable for the create the viewers, I think that Twitch is in a great spot. Half. You can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link, aura.com slash patrickcc. Aura also does so much more to protect you. Antivirus, VPN, password manager, identity theft protection, credit monitoring, and much more. And the best part is you get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura protect you and keep your information safe online. You can let people continue to exploit you and profit off your private information. All right, dude, this stream ads go ridiculous. to Aura.com slash PatrickCC to start your two-week free trial. Link in the description. Thanks, Aura. On an average Twitch stream, a viewer will get a minimum of three minutes of advertisements per hour. However, in late 2022, Twitch announced the rollout of the Ads Incentive Program, yep. where they encourage streamers to run eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour. Multiple minutes of ads being displayed consecutively will result in viewers either leaving the platform or clicking off to another streamer. Any streamer, I, I personally do agree. Yo, wait, I know this guy. Any streamer that is willing to put eight minutes of ads an hour you're just asking to kill your channel but you know what's crazy chat you know who streamers the w community runs eight minutes of ads it's the truth they do they do and they don't care um they just don't care they run a lot of ads uh, I, I think our community, like my community specifically, is much more uh, disliking of ads because a lot of you guys were here like five years ago, six years ago, when there's almost no ads. So it's just super intrusive. When a lot of these kids grew up in an ad world where they just have ads all the time and they kind of get used to it. When a lot of you guys grew up on Twitch with no ads and now all of a sudden you're getting smacked with ads, it's annoying. The only problem is every time you click on a new stream, you will get hit with another non-skippable 30 second ad. There is I don't no think way that's to a skip problem. the ads. There is no way to escape the ads and there is no way to rewind the stream and see what you just missed. This has led to a near 10% decrease in hours watched and average that's viewers just, from 2021 to 20. That, it, that is just not it. Like do not, you cannot just throw that out there like that's the truth. It's not the truth. COVID is ending. Everybody is down in viewership. The average English streamer is down 33% in viewership, not because of ads. Ads have been doing this now for the past two years. It's because of COVID. 2022, and both of those metrics are also down in 2023 by 5%. Simply put, there are too many ads on Twitch, but that's a good thing for the company, right? Well, not exactly. Twitch does not have an immense amount of data on who their viewers are because there isn't a whole lot to do on the platform to track it. Think about YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. In just a few minutes, you will be exposed to a large variety of different niches and you are actively pressing the like button or stopping to engage with the content. The amount of specific information you give about yourself without realizing is just data that gets organized and used to sell targeted ads to you. Because of my Instagram habits, the app knows that I like men's streetwear and accessories, skateboarding, modern furniture, rap music, and golf. So modern they can send furniture. me ads related to those things. All Twitch knows about me is that I watch I'm Dante a lot and that he's my favorite streamer. So they could maybe guess what I might be interested in based on what they think I'm Dante's viewers like. And because of this, most advertisers don't feel comfortable using Twitch because they don't know if they are truly selling to their target audience. Are you drinking water? When you advertise on YouTube, a brand like Pampers can target as specific as 28 year old married women that live in the East. I mean, it's easy. Just you target neckbeard 4chan users and you get about 80% of the fish in the sea here. You know, it's like, it's not that hard. You get, all right, what is a neckbeard who's like, you know, 22 to 38? And then bam, you got yourself about 80% of the community. Eastern United States and are pregnant or just had their first child. And YouTube can run ads so that mostly viewers who fit in that category will see those ads. If Pampers went to Twitch with that target audience and- 
They just target Brit. Mind, they would simply not know where to run the ads. The only thing that Twitch knows is that their audience is mostly men, ages 13 to 35, who like video games. This yep. eliminates a huge chunk of potential revenue because only a small amount of brands want to advertise to that audience. Energy drink brands, unhealthy snack brands, car brands, and hey. other men's lifestyle brands love advertising on Twitch, which True. leads to interesting sponsorships like QT Cinderella baking a cake on a live stream, but with a manscaped partnership that that says we save balls on the screen. To make things worse for advertisers, every deal has to be a long conversation with the ad sales team at Twitch. Back and forth emails, phone calls, contracts, a process that takes forever. But any brand okay. or individual can simply go to YouTube, click start advertising, and run a campaign without ever talking to anyone. Twitch will never be a real competitor if they don't figure out a way to get more reliable data on their users and create a programmatic ad system so brands can sell to their audience without relying on communication with a Twitch employee. And because of their inability to produce substantial revenue, they hired internal leadership who would shift the focus away from creators and towards driving profits. The senior vice president of global creators, Constance Knight, created a new initiative. Cut costs, cut costs, cut costs. Every decision over the course of her tenure was fully based on how it was going to increase company profits, which isn't necessarily her position since she is the head of global creators. Therefore, the needs of creators were constantly being ignored. In one specific example, Knight said that burnout was not a valid reason for creators to not meet contractual obligations. If you work! You don't know, Yo, most up. of Twitch's top creators have contracts directly with the platform where they are being paid essentially a salary or hourly. All right. Twitch, here's the truth. You ready? Sucks. Really rate to sh Twitch spends a lot of its money chat on content creator contracts. Almost all of it. They spend so much money on content creator contracts. For example, Pokimane, we want you to stay on our platform. We're gonna offer you $5 million for two years and you have to stream no cam Valorant to 10,000 viewers for 100 hours a month with four minutes of ads and you have to come to TwitchCon. That is a legitimate contract that could happen, right? These contracts have happened for years, okay? For years. They spend tens of millions of dollars on these contracts for creators okay why 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 would you pay somebody that has no leverage to go to another website and why would you pay when there is no other website? Why would you give them money? It's a fucking waste. Like, uh, for example, why would you give somebody uh, like me a insanely good contract when you know that, let's say I get a contract somewhere else. I'm killing my channel, right? If I go to, let's say, Facebook, buy, I'm done. I'm going to kill my career if I go over to Facebook, right? But if let's say I go to another platform and what Kick's been doing a lot lately is they do something where um, you have to stream a certain amount of hours over on, on Kick, right? But you still stream on Twitch. But nobody's going to go over to Kick full time because it will kill their career. And Kick knows that and Twitch knows that. So why would you give me money? Uh, to stay on your platform full time, let's say, why would you give me five, ten million dollars for two years when all I'm going to be doing is streaming an extra like, you know, forty hours a month on Kick? When you know I have to stay on this website, there's no reason. Some streamers, yes, it's it's. I think they should get contracts, right? Like I think Ludwig is an example of someone that it makes sense. XQC, right? It makes sense. But for a lot of content creators who are like, I deserve a Twitch contract. No, you don't. Because you have no leverage to go anywhere else. Because if you go anywhere else, it's not going to matter. And that's just the truth. You go over and stream 40 hours on Kick. Cool. All right. 
That's not worth Twitch spending $10 million for two years for to keep your name on the platform. Doesn't make a difference. Stream exclusively on the platform. These contracts... And these contracts are sometimes given to the fucking dumbest creators, in my opinion. It's like, oh, wow, this creator's popping off. Let's give it to him. It's like, dude, and... Yeah, he's popular for a game right now, but wait six months till that's dead. And then they have no... And then they're, they're not going anywhere anyway. ...require them to stream anywhere from 70 to 100 hours per month, which is roughly three hours per day or four hours per day if you want the weekends off. But the VP was not letting creators use burnout or basically them being unmotivated to stream as a valid... Like the Logic contract. How Did they say how much Logic's contract was? Like, it was the dumbest thing I ever heard in my... I, I seen one Logic stream where he got a Charizard. What a waste. What an absolute waste of a contract. Twitch wasted a shit ton of money there. It made no sense. Um, now, do some streamers that make sense to give contracts to? Yes. Streamers that have leverage, right? Uh, streamers that have other contracts possible in their, in their inboxes. But to a lot of these content creators who don't, it's like, why give them a contract in general for millions of dollars? That's where Twitch is wasting a lot of their money. It's on stupid contracts of streamers that aren't going to leave anyway. Valid excuse to not meet their monthly stream requirements, which led to Twitch employees feeling like the company was losing its way. 12 Twitch employees had gone to HR or logged complaints with their superiors overnight. Like, Russell needs a contract. Fast. Five had left the company citing Knight as a reason. Now, some of you watching could never be convinced that sitting at a computer and playing video games could become a stressful or an annoying job in any way, shape, or form. But at the end of the day, it still is a job, and anyone can burn out from any job that they do eh, every single it's day. It's so easy. Years. Another previous Twitch employee took to YouTube to state how they feel about the company. Twitch doesn't care about creators. Twitch cares about looking like they care about creators. Everything Twitch has done for the last... Anyone that's going to look at me like this with the fucking $400 mic, I feel like you're probably trying to be a creator from probably putting this video out. So I'm not going to listen to you. Four years has been with the goal of feeling like they understand and care. Although this could seem like an employee who is just upset about being fired, Twitch has shown time and time again that no matter how large of a creator you are, they will take you down, even at your highest moment. Kai Sinat, a creator who only just started streaming in February of 20... Isn't that a good thing? Doesn't that show that Twitch is more fair than people put them out to be? 2021 dominated Twitch in all of 2022. Okay. He reached the very rare milestone of 100,000 subscribers, which made him the number one most subscribed creator at that time. This prompted him to do a subathon, which was a 24-7, 28-day-long non-stop stream in February 2023 to try and break the record for earning the most subscribers on Twitch in a single month. That right. record was previously held by Ludwig at 283,000. Right. Not only did Kai break it, he demolished it, peaking at 306,621 all-time subscribers. Right. It was reported that he earned Twitch $10 million, while Kai only received a $2 million payout. If you believe that, you are fucking dumb. If you believe this, you are fucking stupid. I, I, and you just want to hate Twitch. You want to hate Twitch if you believe that this is the real numbers. It is a flat out lie. It is bullshit. And it's just people who want to ha go on the bandwagon of hating on Twitch. It is completely wrong. It is completely wrong. You say kick is greater than Twitch if you, in this situation. You got to realize something. You may have made more money on kick and subs, but Kai probably made a few million dollars that month in ads alone. He was live 24 hours a day with 100,000 average viewers. So as much as you want to claim that Kai might have made some uh, a couple of dollars or two on the fucking subs on kick, he made millions on ad money alone in the month of February. Now imagine if Kai did this subathon in December. Kai would have probably made... Five to ten million dollars in ad money alone for himself. You know, people like to say, oh, but Kick gives 95% ad uh, revenue. Twitch, yeah, we, they take 50-50 and I think that's bullshit and they should give 70-30 at least. But if you do run ads on Twitch, you do make a lot more money. It's just the truth. Um, especially for the higher up creators. These numbers. Why December? Because basically here's how it works. In the... This is January, and this is December, right? Ad money is really, really bad in, in January. Uh, really, really bad. It's 
abysmal. People are still trying to get their marketing budgets. They are, uh, a lot of companies aren't even doing marketing in January because they know that December and J the holidays months are over. Um, a lot of companies are actually bleeding because people are returning products and stuff like that. So a lot of people do not put money in in January. And it's really just a slow uptick to December, like that. And there's four quarters, and each quarter it goes up more and more. Um, and you're saying it's just Christmas. No. I mean, I stream, I could tell you. About every month, I get more and more money in ad revenue up until December. It gets better and better. Budgets are better. People learn, etc. So Kai did this in February. He probably would have made double the amount of money, if not more, in December. Were false, and Kai did not appreciate the narrative. Twitch made 15 to 20 million dollars on Kai Sinat, and Kai only brought about two million back to the to the to the bro. Where are y'all getting these numbers from? Where did bro? Where bro? Where are these numbers coming from? Because now it's a narrative that I'm just a black man who's gonna use for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Kai breaking the sub record. I'm actually glad he said that. I didn't even know he said that. It, it's the truth. It's like where those numbers were just like pushed everywhere on Twitter. I saw it everywhere. And it's like that's just completely false. And no one said anything. Because if you said anything, you're just like, oh, it's like, fuck you, dude. Like, you're just a Twitch chill. When I, bro, I, I stream. I know how much Kai probably made. He made a few mil just on, on ads. It was huge news covered by publications like the BBC and Bloomberg. <laughs> and most of us would assume that Twitch would do anything to boost Kai up. After all, he made history on their platform. At the very Twitch was very lenient with Kai during a subathon. There were multiple times where Kai could have been banned and he didn't get banned because that Twitch knew that he was doing his subathon and it was smarter for them marketing wise to not ban him and it then to ban him because it could possibly ruin the subathon. He got away with a lot of shit. And honestly, do I think Twitch did the right thing there? Absolutely. Absolutely they did the right thing doing that. They should have let him go and get and and do that. Um, I do think that if you're trying to do a 24-7 stream like that in front of hundreds of thousands of people, it's much harder to constantly have TOS-friendly stuff. Things do happen. So I think it's totally a good thing that Twitch didn't ban him because it just made their platform look so much better. At the very least, they would try to use this amazing moment to show the world what wonderful opportunities there are for creators on Twitch. They could squeeze out more press with Kai and do campaigns to get more people or brands interested in live streaming. But no, instead, they sent him a $100 pair of sneakers and banned him from their platform. Give me a break, bro. Well, they banned him for like 48 hours? What is this narrative? A two-day ban he got. Yeah, I mean, th this guy Patrick's just farming, like, the W side. It's just like, bro, that's just not even it. Like, he was live yesterday. It what? It better be a... Contract and oh! Congratulations, Kai, on your huge accomplishment. We are so proud of you, Laura, Anna, and all of your friends at Twitch. Oh, God. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was no contract in that package. Look, I will admit, is that a funny, fucking, stupid ass, ugly ass shoe? Yes. Whoever sent that to Twitch, I, I would say you should get fired, but there's you're probably one of like 400. Um,. It was definitely really stupid. I don't know why they did that. Uh, really bad idea. Who thought? Send him something cool. Give him like a, I don't know. Uh, like, I, I don't even know what you could have sent him. Like a Rolls Royce or something. A watch that had Twitch on it. That's like something, a Starforge system. Bedazzled Starforge system. I don't know. Um, they could have sent him something. But they sent him fucking bedazzled shoes. Really not the best look. Um. Twitch did not see enough value in Kai to offer him a streaming contract. Or they are making a very strategic business move. Twitch is very top heavy. I, I forgot that this guy's in the contact between Kai and his manager and Twitch. Like what? Meaning the top creators are making all of the money. 
only 5% of Twitch streamers made over $1,000 in 2021, and 50% of all of their revenue comes from 1% of their creators. Kai became a 1%er without getting an exclusive contract, which means Twitch is profiting immensely off him. It seems like they are not giving him a paid contract because they don't think he will leave. His largest audience and main financial vehicle is on Twitch, and if it was up to them, they wouldn't give streamers contracts to begin with. They want to get to a point where they aren't as reliant on the top 1% of creators so if someone leaves the platform they will be just fine youtube and they are I, I i mean truth be told like if the creator leaves they're gonna kill their career as of right now and why give them contracts because if they leave they're going to die like there's just no point um i, I it's smart for them to 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 for 90 percent of creators to not give them contracts some contracts yes they should stay um like tim the tap man i think was a huge blow to twitch and i think it was really stupid for him to let him go I think they should have kept Tim, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, a lot of these people, it's just like, who cares? In one year, out the other. Oh, wow, you got a YouTube contract? Cool, we'll see you in two years. Look at this guy's toast. Got a Facebook contract. Twitch didn't give a shit. And guess what? He came back in two years. Because you could take your money and make millions of dollars, but you're not nearly as relevant as you would be on Twitch. And not even close. You know? YouTube has 600 creators with over 10 million subscribers. If 20% of those people stopped creating, YouTube wouldn't be hurting financially. Eventually, those creators will be replaced. But Twitch 1%ers can't be replaced as quickly or as easily. Maybe Kai is a transitional point for Twitch as a company to see if they can keep 1% talent without paying them additional money. Just a few short weeks after they sent him the sneakers, Kai Sinat announced he was banned from the platform on oh, April no. 17th. How could they possibly ban the number one creator on no. the site? Nobody knew the reason why, but it prompted support from people like Kyrie Irving and Nicki Minaj. We later found out that Twitch told Kai it was- Support from Nicki Minaj. I like him a lot is the support that she gave him. That's the support. I like him a lot. That Twitch told Kai it was from a GTA clip where he promoted simulated sexual activity. This okay. was the clip. Come on activity on that website. Oh, there's a ton of real borderline sexual activity on that website, let alone simulated. Twitch is just reminding him that he, no matter how big he is, will not be able to break the rules. And everyone knows Twitch's terms of service are extremely unclear. In 2019, Brazilian Twitch streamer- I mean, didn't Amaranth just get banned too? Like, they, they, they're- Oh my god, like- Gabriel Baptista received- It's never gonna be perfect. It will never be perfect. And people will always have something to complain. They'll never be perfect. It's never gonna be a perfect system. It can't be a perfect system. ...his suspension because he showed a Pink Floyd poster during Why? Sadly. Okay, yeah, the Dr. Disrespect ban. ...was banned for, well, they never told him why. Sadly, Kai's ban is just one of an extremely long list of incredibly stupid bans that Twitch has given out and will continue to in the future. So with Twitch continuously making the wrong decisions when it comes to profits, employees, and creators, is competition a real threat to their company? Recently, the live streaming platform Kick has made some noise after their $30 million plus deal where they exclusively acquired Aiden Ross. Mm. Kick works and looks exactly almost like Twitch. The main difference is that they have a much more lenient terms of service. Streamers can gamble, say and do just about anything they want without getting banned. And the biggest thing is that they are offering creators a 95% cut of their subscriber revenue. Jared FPS, a kick streamer, highlighted his kick earnings at $3,800 for 800 subscribers, which would be about $2,000 on Twitch. However, I don't think this is going to be enough to really compete with Twitch. Think about all of the problems I highlighted in this video. Kick is going to have to deal with all of those same problems. No, they're not. Because they have gambling. Their website's a push to, 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 to gamble. They, they don't have to worry about that stuff. The one thing that they have to worry about is how many viewers can they get when they get a streamer to start streaming there to go over to the gambling side. That's, that's the one thing that they have to figure out. It's how do we push as many people from watching you play Valorant to you going to gamble? Because that's how they make their money. Um, and that's just it problems, but more importantly with advertisers, they will be targeting the same niche as Twitch, but with less censorship and more risque content, 
advertisers will feel even less comfortable than they already do with Twitch. Right. But the biggest problem is Kick is built on Amazon IVS. Yep. Remember when Twitch said it was too expensive to run Twitch on IVS? Well, Kick uses the same infrastructure. The difference is Kick is likely paying at least 20 to 50% more than Twitch is to keep their business operating. So in a way, no matter how successful Kick gets, they will be paying millions, if not billions to Amazon, who could use that money to fund Twitch. Now, YouTube gaming True. or their live streaming sector could very well be a threat. The worst part about YouTube. True. I get uh, Twitch is I'm sure Amazon's like, good job, Twitch. Nice job. <laughs> you know, you got another service that's cost that's paying us millions of dollars. You're doing a great job. And that's exactly I'm sure how they feel, because it's the truth They're They got a whole nother site with a lot of the people that were already previously banned that weren't making them profits anyway. And they're now generating them millions of dollars through their IVS services. So it's as much as people might say that Twitch hates uh, kick and there's competition. It actually uh, is a relationship that I'm sure they're happy with. YouTube is that the live streaming experience is just not as good. The chat is chaotic and hard to read. You can't look at. Look, I don't think Twitch will be gone in seven years. I don't know what this video is on about. It's completely wrong. And in fact, I think Twitch going the way where they're getting rid of a lot of these stupid contracts with creators that either A, don't try, or B, have no leverage, is going to make Twitch profitable. And I think that there's almost no end in sight for Twitch. The one thing that I think can get Twitch going and hurt Twitch hard, um, now, do I think other co live streaming uh, websites can pop up? Yeah. The pie of Twitch, which is like 75% of live streaming, I think can definitely be reduced. Through Rumble, through Kick, other websites can definitely take a piece of that pie. And um, whether through like 100% ad revenue or something, incentives to stream there, right? One place that I think it could take a huge pie though, over years if they really wanted to, is YouTube. I think YouTube can crush Twitch if they wanted to. Crush Twitch. Um, but the problem is with YouTube, it's like they are a... A, a, they're not a live streaming service and they don't want to be they they want to be a video service so they have to like teeter the the side of like oh it's just do we want to be live streaming do we want to do more live streaming like but youtube can obviously fucking crush twitch I, I mean it could but will it i don't really know what do you guys think would you leave for 10 million dollars I, I've said this before. Um, I have and am talking to other websites about uh, not necessarily leaving Twitch, but more so to stream extra hours to make more money. Um, and, you know, I don't see a problem in that at all because it's what I said. I will still be streaming here the entire time. I'll still be live, right? And you do extra hours, and then it's like Twitch is like, okay. And then you just stream, you come back. Um, you know? Like, that's really it. Uh, I've already asked you guys if I could do that. And you said yes. You're like my parents. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's going to be on DLive chat logs which makes it really hard to moderate the raid feature is terrible the discovery page for live streamers actually looks like they don't update it and they lack many of the small features that make twitch streaming more dynamic and more fun Yet here's one thing that twitch had for years that is now slowly going away and that's the feeling of the community like the thing is and i know that my twitch chat and a lot of other twitch chats that we're associated with they had the feeling of community for so many years, like when a song that was really popping off came on the Twitch, right? Like the Dr. Disrespect song, everyone listened to it. It felt like nobody was not listening to it. It's like it went everywhere all over the platform, right? But now there's like seven different communities that really popped up. One being the W community. And there's just not this big community that there used to be of just like, you know, degenerates that you guys mostly are, right? There's uh, the W community, the the Minecraft community, but let's look the W community for sure, right? They're not they're not emotionally attached to Twitch at all. 
They don't really care about the emotes. They spam W and L in ratio. Or slurs. They will leave. And, and that's the one thing that Twitch has a problem with, with the new W side of the community, is they're not afraid to just fucking go to another platform and if they all go, because they have no care for these emotes. They don't have they don't have a care for the community. They're not from the community. When you guys are so much more Twitch driven, because you have the emotes, you have the you know the interactions, you like the website, um, it's harder for you to change. You know. But that's one thing that Twitch has for sure that it's it's not on their side is the community of Twitch has died dramatically, and now there's like eight different types of communities. Uh, who are not really focused on just caring about Twitch alone. Yet even with all of those downsides, YouTube still holds nearly 15% market share in the live streaming space. So why is YouTube a threat? It's very simple. YouTube has 2.5 billion monthly active users compared to Twitch's I thought it'd be more. 40 million. YouTube has a strong and reliable ad revenue system, True. which generated $29 billion last year. Plus, they are offering That's more than 70, I make. 30 splits for streamers. And if you build a following up as a streamer on YouTube, you now have a whole YouTube channel that you can post regular videos on. You just built yourself two assets at one time. Most Twitch streamers have to post clips of their streams on YouTube in order to grow. And even still, the translation is not that great, and they end up being more popular on YouTube. If YouTube just well, got a live streaming page to operate exactly like Twitch or Kick, which wouldn't really be that hard for them, it wouldn't make any sense for small streamers to use Twitch. 1% streamers like Hassan and XQC wouldn't immediately jump ship, or maybe never because they already have a huge following. At the same time, everybody has a price. Nobody thought Ludwig would switch platforms. I don't know where the hell you're getting that from. Everyone thought Ludwig would switch platforms. What kind of question is that? <laughs> the YouTube guy not going to YouTube? Color me fucking pink. You, you really thought that he wouldn't go? If the second I heard YouTube contracts, I said, all right, Ludwig's probably going. Like, what the fuck kind of question is that? Like, that's literally his fucking place. He's a YouTuber. Uh, that, that, that is not true at all. But he did. So why have no, he did. tried to take over? Especially since I claim it'll be so easy for them. Maybe they just don't see live streaming as a worthwhile business investment. Think about That's exactly it. They literally just don't see it as a worthwhile investment for the to just change their platform dramatically. Could they? Yes. Is it worth it? No. Because why are you on YouTube? You want to watch videos. You don't want to watch a stream. 99.999% of people want to watch videos. Everything I mentioned in this video, all the hurdles, all the expenses, all the bans, moderation, discoverability issues, creator contracts, advertiser uncertainty, Maybe YouTube thinks that live streaming will never be as profitable as video on demand, film, sports entertainment, and music streaming. Maybe live streaming will always be considered a niche subgenre of the entertainment industry. Yes. Until YouTube sees a bar packed full of people paying a $10 cover to watch Hassan debate Aiden Ross or- Here's the problem. People on YouTube are looking for YouTube videos. And when you have a live stream on the sidebar of your channel, basically unless you're doing a YouTube style-esque video with a YouTube style-esque thumbnail, People are going to click on it and they're going to immediately click off of it because they realize it's live. And that's the problem YouTube has is Ludwig, for example, will have a ton of viewers when he does YouTube content, but he'll go down to 10,000 viewers playing Valorant because no one on YouTube wants to watch gaming. They want to watch YouTube style content, especially on Ludwig's channel. Kai Sinat and 21 Savage react to Drake memes. They probably won't even bother. So what should Twitch do? Well, they definitely need to figure out a middle ground with ads. They need advertisers True. to pay the bills, and we as viewers understand that. Maybe a feature could be implemented that Don't allows be put viewers hypers. to skip an ad or two just in case they pop up at a crucial time in the stream. No. Maybe even a feature that allows viewers to watch ads for a reward or uninterrupted ad time when there's some downtime in somebody's stream. Kind of like how mobile games will allow you to watch an ad for a reward. Or you could exchange personal survey information for less ads. It's invasive, but hey, they're going to try to do that anyway. Twitch just needs to make their ads more enjoyable to watch. And I've told Twitch this. Yo, what up, Gappy? I've told Twitch this, and I do believe this. Twitch needs to, and I think they need to work with the publishers, make more entertaining ads for the viewers. And the biggest problem with the ads is not necessarily you getting the ads. It's that it's the same fucking ads every single time. And I told them this. You know what it does when you get the same ad every time? It makes you not want to get the brand. It makes you hate the brand. Like, 
when you get the same fucking ad for Pampers or whatever, it's just gonna make you go, oh, this brand to, I fucking hate this brand, get off my screen, holy fuck, it's the same ad. It does the exact opposite of what you want. And I think that it's a huge problem for fucking Twitch with their stupid ads that they have. It's the same 10 ads every single time. I told Twitch what they should do is they should work with more brands if they possibly can. But what would be great if they can work with the publishers is if they can make it so that the streamer or someone in the communities has an ad. For example, one great ad that I always uh, appreciate was Extra Emily's Chocolate Milk ad. Because you would see that ad, you know it's Extra Emily for a lot of the people on Twitch. And it's a little bit more enjoyable to watch than to watch something like a fucking boring ad that you could possibly see on a mobile game. You know? And not only is it better for you to watch as a viewer, it's more memorable. I don't remember any ads from Twitch, but do I remember Extra Emily's milk ad? Absolutely I do. Uh, and I think that Twitch is... Dan Clancy is a very smart man. The guy who's the CEO of Twitch right now. And I do think that he knows what he's doing to make Twitch a more enjoyable experience for ads. That really, to me, is the only... <laughs> the only real problem with Twitch is the ads. If they fix that for a viewer... I think Twitch is in a great spot. <laughs> I do. And you want to know how you know they're in a great spot, chat? They're not doing nearly as much Twitch contracts, and people ain't leaving. So that's how you know they are in a good spot. Mm -mm. You know? Can't be troll. Show them what three minutes of ads looks like so they can understand. No, and, and listen, listen, do other sites have potential to, uh, do other sites have potential to, to take a piece of the pie for Twitch? Absolutely. The way Twitch has done shit now where they're like, you could stream on seven different platforms at the same time. It can make other platforms. Uh, the, the fact that Twitch has removed Twitch contracts in a lot of ways, and now you could stream on other sites. Other sites can pop off like kick rumble, Facebook, etc. not Facebook really, but like other sites, um, it can change, but, uh, and they could take a piece of the pie. They don't need to take the whole thing, but they just need a piece of the pie. It can't happen. I think it can happen real fast. You know? And after they improve their ad system, just keep the 70, 30 revenue split with yes. all creators, big or small. Mo no, I think that they should only have the 70, 30 split for streamers that are on the cusp of becoming full time. Because it incentivizes smaller streamers to try to grow and become uh, get a 70-30 split. Because that's what it did for me. It incentivized me to get more subs. It incentivized me to become a bigger streamer. Because I could potentially get that 70-30 split. I think it's also a waste of money to give it to creators that are under like you know a couple hundred CCV. It's just not worth it. Most platforms provide a better split than that. So that's the least they can do. Also, more clarity and consistency when it comes to streamer bans seems like a very fair ask. No, that's just not necessary at all. Like, it, it absolutely is not necessary for Twitch to let everyone know why the person was banned. That is just fucking stupid. Like, no, no, I know that, like, you'll farm it on Twitter for streamer bans Twitter, but it really does not fucking matter. Just tell people why they were banned in detail. Timestamp it, provide a clip. Every single time someone is banned, it should be the same. That part is true. I do think Twitch needs to let the creator know more, but I thought he was many like, let the streamer let, let the community know more process most importantly they need to improve discoverability for small slash medium-sized creators totally disagree i think most streamers are small streamers because they're not good streamers and i think not only that i think twitch has done a way better job over the years with recommended 30 day and a lot of other stuff i think that it is 100 fine now i think it used to be a problem but now twitch has fixed a lot of the bullshit and i think twitch is in a great spot when it comes to discoverability i know people want to bitch and complain and say oh i'm a small streamer and i don't get any viewers yeah do better i don't know what to tell you go on tiktok make more tiktoks do more youtube shorts try to grow outside of the platform because if it hasn't been obvious for the past six years now you're not growing on twitch anymore that's not how it works you have to find discoverability through other places but people like to complain a lot and say that it's twitch's fault it's not twitch's fault it's your fault do a better job 
Twitch streamers relying on YouTube or TikTok to gain a following is absolutely ludicrous. No, it's not. How is it ludicrous in the slightest that someone's trying to go on and works on TikTok and YouTube? Of course you're going to. What the fuck? What else would it be? You think that Twitch should just... How the fuck would Twitch for thousands of small creators every day push the smaller creators? And people don't want to watch smaller creators. Most people want to watch the bigger streamers and they want to watch people that already have a community. And I want to watch a lot of people that understand and already have, you know, experience and, and, and they're professionals at Twitch. Like... TikTok in YouTube is a great source for Twitch to make them people come into the website. So of course they want you to push their shit onto the other websites. Oh, what's Twitch? I never heard of this. I saw this person on TikTok blow up from it. Let me click their Twitch. Wow, okay, this is Twitch. Cool. Why would Twitch want to internalize their way of, of growth? That is just such a stupid idea. It, it's really stupid. They want, they want to get other people from other platforms to come to Twitch. That's how they grow. And Twitch has done a great job over the years, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions, of making other content creators, big and small, pushed more than it used to be. And it's never going to be a perfect system, and people are always going to complain because they're annoying. Yeah, there's a lot of misinformation in this video, and it's a lot of stupid takes. Twitch is way too reliant on the one percenters, and they're way too reliant on other platforms. Ultimately, I want to see Twitch win, and the streaming community wants to see them win as well. I think live stream. I don't think that's true at all for like 90% of people on Twitter especially. They just want to see Twitch fail so badly. Uh, can we get some lulls in chat for New Froggy? Um, and I think it's really lame. Uh, I, I mean, I understand why you want... People are like, oh, Twitch is a porn website, like this and that. It's like, bro, I mean, I like Twitch. Do I think other websites can pop up and should pop up? Sure, that's competition, great. Uh, you know, I think that's a great thing. And I think other websites could take a piece of that pie, but Twitch is a great website. And I think people that try to just shit on it all the time are, uh, they want to hate because they're not in, they're not popular on Twitch. They want to hate on Twitch because it's easy to do. Streamers are incredibly underrated in terms of their entertainment value and ability to hold an audience for hours on end. But if they was that a diss at Shroud? Hold on. Incredibly underrated in terms of their entertainment. Really, I want to see Twitch win. And the streaming community wants to see them win as well. I think live streamers are incredibly underrated in terms of their entertainment value. And oh, okay. To That's about to get pissed. For hours on end. But if they don't make these critical improvements and YouTube just decides to invest a billion dollars into making YouTube gaming a fierce competitor, I think Twitch could be on the verge of going out of business five to ten years down the line. No. No. No.